Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm going to be testing the Top Done BT100 battery tester. Uh, this was sent to me. I get uh, asked a lot of times if I would be interested in doing reviews or tests or demonstrations of various products. Um, I'm always likely to say yes to diagnostics equipment or tools, uh, things like that that I would like to have around uh, the garage anyway. So, uh, of course, I said yes, uh, I want to check this out. Um, there's been a few times where I wish I had a battery tester. Usually uh, I'm left to using a multimeter, which tells you voltage, but isn't real great at actually testing the internals and making sure that things are working on the inside. So then you can go to your local auto parts store and they'll usually do it for free using something like this. This is a Napa battery tester, MDX225. I'm gonna use this to compare against uh, the top dot and see um, what kind of results I get if I get similar results uh, So first of all the top Don is a $62 product last I checked on Amazon link down in the description of this video, of course uh, this Napa battery tester uh, is $500 so Yeah, let's just see the difference right so I have these batteries here um, and, uh, and I gotta give a shout out to a guy named William in the uh, Tampa Jeep crew. I was looking for somebody to help me out with some batteries that were of questionable quality because it's kind of lame to do a battery tester test on good batteries. And all of our vehicles have good batteries in them. So I'm like, ah, I need to find some crappy batteries. I was also looking for somebody with a crappy alternator or charging system. I didn't find that, but we'll go ahead and do a comparison and see how this does at testing the charging system and, uh, and all of that stuff. So, uh, but he did have some batteries. Uh, by the way, this guy, awesome Jeep. Uh, he has a uh, TJ, same exact color as my son's, a little different year. Uh, but he's put an LS motor in it, and check this out. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I want to go wheeling with this guy. Uh, anyway. Uh, back to this, he lent me these batteries and he also lent me this Napa battery tester so I can do some comparisons for you. Uh, so first of all, just looking at the user's manual, uh, it's pretty simple, but it does tell you exactly how to operate the device. Uh, it does three tests, right? So there is the battery test which we're gonna do here on the table. There's a cranking test, which needs to be done in the vehicle, and there's a charging test also done in the vehicle. Uh, so yeah, so I know how this works. I don't need the manual, but it's there if you need it. These are all side posts. So I do have a couple of uh, side post adapters because it's important that you can get the clamps uh, onto the battery nicely. Um, you can test voltage by sticking them in there, you know, just barely getting them on, uh, you know, like this or something, but it's not good for actually doing a test. So um, using these battery post adapters. So these clamps uh, have a uh, tooth side and, uh, and a flat side, very similar actually uh, to what we see on the Napa uh, clamps. Uh, one main difference is the cable for the Napa one is much longer, and I think that's gonna become a value when we get inside the vehicle. The top done, a little bit shorter, but we'll see if it gets the job done. All right, so anyway, um, let me get this guy out of the way for you so that we can focus on the results here. And basically, uh, what I'm going to do is connect this to the batteries and see what their current situation is. Now, the battery tester will automatically power on from the power of the batteries. Now, I have put uh, a couple of these on a charger, and it's important that you test batteries that are charged. If not, the battery tester should tell you to recharge it. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I think maybe one of these isn't charged, uh, but I did put uh, a couple of them on a charger. So this is reading 12.33 volts uh, right now, which is uh, actually not bad. 
And uh, by the way, William said if any of these turn out to be good batteries, he wants them back. So I don't know uh, if they're going to be good or not. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and go into the menu. And we have our options here, battery test, cranking test, charging test, review data. It does save the data from the last uh, test that you did. And then if you want to change the language. So I'm going to do a battery test here. So I'm going to hit enter. It gives you the option of regular flooded, which is what these are, just regular lead acid batteries. Uh, you can do AGM flat paint, AGM spiral, uh, GEL, EFB. So whatever kind of battery uh, you're dealing with, you can probably get tested. So we're regular flooded here. And then we select our input for the test. Uh, CCA, DIN, JIS, EN, EIC, GB, SAE, MCA, BCI, CA, these are all going to be different depending on what region of the world you're in and what measuring method is used. Uh, here in the US we tend to see CCA and CA, cranking amps and cold cranking amps. All of these batteries have both of those values on them, so I'm just going to go with the default of cold cranking amps and uh, select that. And then you have a chance to enter it in. This battery we're playing with right now is 650. It's already set for 650. You can go up and down right here. And then once we hit that, we are gonna do a test. And what it's doing is it's putting a load on the battery. This is actually gonna put a load on the battery and see uh, if the internals are able to handle the amount of amperage that it's rated for. I mean, right away it says it's a bad battery, replace it. As far as the health, it's showing a 12% capacity. So it's rated at 650 cold cranking amps and it's reading 234. And so good voltage, bad amperage, right? So, um, so that's a problem. It has a high internal resistance of 12.72 uh, milli ohms. Uh, but yeah, this test shows it's bad, even though the voltage looked good. So let's see what the NAPA uh, tool tells us. Same exact thing, once you connect it up, it's going to automatically turn on 12.32 volts, so we're pretty similar there. I'm gonna go in, uh, the NAPA tool asks you if it's going to be in the vehicle or out of the vehicle. Uh, we're obviously out of the vehicle here. Uh, automotive, regular flooded, same thing, you can pick different options here. Uh, CCA is the standard we're gonna use, 650, is the right one. We're gonna hit enter. It's doing the same sort of a load test on this battery. Ah, same result, replace battery. So it's showing a measured of 200 cold cranking amps out of the rating of 60. What did this other one? Let's see, 200. You remember, because you just watched it, but I don't remember. So I'm gonna go back and do review data from the last test. Yeah, 234, so give or take a little bit, that's pretty close in reading. But either way, both of them said the battery's bad. So uh, I say that's a pretty successful test. Let's go on to the next battery. Let's see what this guy has to offer us. All right, so this guy's dead. Charged, but useless. <laughs> so, and that's the problem with batteries is sometimes you'll get them charged up and they show they have a charge, but yet they don't work right. And that's why the internals, the plates, there's something going on there that is inhibiting the normal function of the battery. All right, so this is at 12.29 volts. So uh, very similar reading, uh, good battery, charged battery, likely I think I charged this one. Uh, let's go ahead and do the battery test. Cold cranking amps on this one is 690, so I'm gonna adjust this. Enter, testing, and it says it's good, but to recharge it. Uh, so this is at 72% of its health. It's showing 585 cold cranking amps out of 690. And it's saying, hey, it's only showing a 50% charge, so charge it some more uh, and it might be good. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I would guess after a recharge of this, if I put it on the charger and conditioned it and brought it up, uh, you know, maybe 
it will actually be a useful battery. So good to know. Let's see. Let's see what the Napa tester shows. Enter 12.29 volts, out of vehicle, automotive, regular flooded, CCA, 690, right, 690. Testing. Good, recharge, same exact result. Showing 532 CCAs out of 690. So, same result, that's encouraging. Remember, $500. $62. I mean, just saying. All right, let's try the last battery. Uh-oh. This one is not even turning on. Okay. Well, since it gets its power from the battery, that must mean this battery doesn't have enough power to even power the tester. What does, what does the manual say is the minimum power required, or does it say? Technical dimensions, warranty, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It does not say. It just says it's solely powered by, but doesn't say what the minimum. I mean, I'm guessing it's 12 volt power supply, and if it's not seeing 12 volts, it must not work. Now, the Napa one, oh gosh, 2.67 is what the voltmeter says. So the Napa one has an internal battery supply. So that is one thing that makes it different is it detects the voltage, but it has its own battery to run the tester itself. So in this case, I have a battery that is so low, it can't power on the battery tester, which to be honest is a pretty good battery test in and of itself, because if it's at 2.67 volts, this thing is toast. Let's just see what happens if we try, yeah, error wiggle clamps, which is not gonna be a problem. What it's saying is, I'm not getting a good voltage that recognizes as an automotive battery. So, yeah, this thing is dead. Yeah, D-E-D, D-R-T, -E -D. dead right there. Anyway, guys, um, so, I feel pretty good so far about the top on that it's able to uh, run toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, a more expensive battery tester. And it would be nice to have something like this in the toolbox uh, just to be able to do some tests. Now it does two other tests, charging tests and cranking tests. So we should do that on the Jeep. All right, let's start with the top Don and uh, the cranking test on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach this to the terminals as best as I can and not to the cables. I'm gonna get it connected to the terminal itself if I can. All right, so 12.69 on CJ's battery. And we're gonna go into cranking test. So I'm gonna hit menu, down to cranking test, enter, and it says start engine. So that's what we know about the cranking test. Uh, time is 6034 milliseconds, cranking low, 8.82 volts. Interesting. All right, let's see what the Napa tester shows us. The difference with how the Napa tester works is it's going to ask us, as it did before, if the battery is in the vehicle or out of the vehicle. If you say in the vehicle, it's gonna assume 
you want to run through the entire gamut of tests. So uh, whereas the top down, you sort of select which tests you want to do, this one just starts running through them all. So uh, it's a top post, automotive, regular flooded, CCAs, 650, testing. Testing, it is above 32. All right, so battery's good. We knew that, basically did that first test uh, like we did on the tabletop here. And then now it's saying to press the enter button to the starter test. So I hit enter and it says start engine. So let me go do that. All right, so it's showing the cranking is normal. Uh, the top don set a little bit low, but uh, it could be because we've sort of started it for the first time after a long time. It's likely that it's in a little better condition to start now. Now it's asking us to go straight through to the charging test. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter, and it's checking for alternator output. And now it wants us to rev the engine with the loads off. Now. If I was using just an Apple one, I would take the cable with me and I could follow instructions. Uh, because I don't have that luxury for the top don, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask my wife to do things for me. <laughs> Can you turn off the air conditioner? And then rev the engine to 2000 RPMs and hold it. Now idle the engine. Turn high beams and blower motor on. All right, I'm pressing. So I would have to do this with the device in there with me if you know I didn't have help. Rev engine, 2000. Okay, stop. Now it says to idle the engine. Turn off the loads, turn off everything. And you can turn off the engine and then enter charging system no problems so at no load it's 13.9 and loaded it's at 13.83 so you can see with this particular test and i'm curious to see how the top don is going to do i literally had to follow instructions with the engine running which is why like i said this super long cord is nice because i could run it around and take it in there with me so Let's see what the top done requires of us. All right, so the top done isn't gonna tell you this on the display, but the instruction manuals cover it. You wanna start the engine for the, uh, the charging test. So before you start it, go ahead and start the engine. We're back in here. It's testing the battery, of course. Uh, with the voltmeter we have the battery test the cranking test and the charging test that we're now going to do so th at this point the vehicle should be running i'm going to hit enter it's going to do a ripple test i don't know what that means now it's doing a load test increase the rpm to 2500 and keep it for five seconds 2500 All right, so that was the charging test. You have an unloaded and a loaded and a ripple, and it says the charging system is normal. Same result, charging system is normal. So that's the comparison between how this one works versus one that's quite a bit more expensive. All right, guys, there you have it. Topped on BT100. Uh, again, I put a link in uh, the description of this video. It is an affiliate link, so I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon if you make any purchases by accessing Amazon through my links. It uh, doesn't cost you any more. Uh, that's it. Uh, you have to decide whether or not uh, 62 bucks is worth it for you if you need a battery tester, or uh, do you want to buy a more expensive one, or do you just want to, for free, go to the local auto parts store and have them test a battery for you? Only downside with that is you got to drive there or you got to pull a battery and take it there. So it is kind of nice to have one at home. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.